Okay, so now you can move on to simulation two of ecology Jenga. So with this round, what's going on is we've now introduced an invasive herbivore. This invasive herbivore feeds on to on these primary producers here. Um, and so there are some new rules with this portion, and these rules can get kind of confusing. So make sure your students are straight on them before you get going, um, or else it'll cause some issues. Um, so special rules, if you roll a one, two, or a three, then you'll now roll a second die um, that will determine if you're an invasive species or not. So say you rolled um, a two on the first one. I guess you probably can't see that. So. Anyway, say you roll a two, um, so now that two stays, but now you have to roll, um, sorry, just got an email. Um, now you have to roll the second dice, or second die. So if you roll a one through four, so I rolled a one, that means that you're an invasive species. Now this die kind of becomes obsolete, you've just determined that you're an invasive species. Um, what happens if you're an invasive species is you take this original number, go back to the table, and double whatever it says to do. So originally, if I weren't an invasive species, then what you do is remove four primary producers. Um, since I am an invasive species, now I'll remove eight primary producers. Okay? Um, and so then you just go through and do that. I guess I probably don't have to film myself playing Jane Dust, but... So as you will probably see, invasive species will make the tower or the community much weaker. Um, because of that, if a group falls really fast, don't let them set up and do a second round of this just because probably everyone will fall relatively quickly. Okay, seven. did it. Um, and so then after that there's a few more questions. Um, again, it asks about if you if your group pulls one of these cards. Again, if a group doesn't pull any cards, they still need to answer what would happen if they, you know, had an invasive species and had to remove a dominant species or a keystone species. Obviously, that'd be pretty detrimental to the community. Um, and so yeah, always make sure that they answer those questions no matter what. Um, the next question asks, or says, explain what made the tower fall. Um, again, invasive species will probably play a major role in that. So again, make sure that they're using terms like invasive species, removal of dominant species, removal of primary producers, things like that. Um, instead of just saying, well, we had to roll a crap ton of pieces, so dang it. Um, anyway, make sure they're using the right terms. Next, it says, obtain the data on the number of plays until it collapse from each group in the class and make a graph that includes information about the number of plays and the community type, um, so invaded or not. So they should probably make two bar graphs here, one graph for invaded species, or communities with invasive species and communities without, or else I guess they could do one combined graph and then show the comparison between the two. Um, but basically just have all the students write their data on the board. You could do two columns, one for the normal community, yeah, that's probably not on the screen, one for the normal community and one for the invasive community, um, and then everyone else makes the graph, and then you can have one or two groups um, draw their final graphs on the board. After that, um, this is a great place to have a discussion, so especially discuss any outliers, so groups that were able to last a long time or a very short amount of time. And have them describe exactly what happened. Okay? Um, and then the next question says Were the simulations variable within the two types of communities? How so? Obviously, we should probably see pretty good variability um, because invasive species requires you to remove a lot of primary producers um, at a faster rate. And then Seven, how do these simulations accurately represent community dynamics and how are they inaccurate? So accurately, obviously it shows this interaction, it shows that 
the consumers are dependent upon the primary producers, so if you take those out, everyone's in trouble. Um, we could talk more about dominant species and, and keystone species. We could talk about the damage of invasive species. Um, invasive species will be covered more in lecture and of course when we cover conservation. Um, so you don't need to go into a whole lot of depth, but this is a really cool introduction to um, just the havoc that they wreak upon ecosystems. Um, so you can talk about all of that. And then the next part, how are they inaccurate? Obviously in this example, no matter what, the tower is going to fall. Now we don't have ecosystems collapsing on a regular basis, right? Um, nature oftentimes finds a way. Um, populations will evolve or humans could try and help. Things like that. Um, interactions could change the degree that they interact with each other um, and whatnot. But the biggest thing is that this tower is going to fall no matter what, whereas in the real world, not so much. Also, this tower is only looking at one species of primary producers and one level of consumers. So obviously, it's a little bit more complex. Um, and it's also kind of treating it like the consumers only eat this one species of plant, which isn't always the case. Um, anyway, any others that your students come up with would be excellent. Um, so that's it for Ecology Jenga. So next we'll talk about um, interactions between species in a given community.